Hi, Professor Stefero here in this screencast covers cilia and flagella. These are microtubule based structures and the next video gives us an overview showing single cell organisms that contain cilia and flagella. Let's watch the video. Many eukaryotic cells have highly specialized microtubular structures that extend outside the cell's membrane. These appendages move the cell and move fluids over the cell's surface. The two types of microtubules that perform these essential duties are flagella and cilia. Flagella appear as long whip-like tails on many single-celled organisms, such as this euglena. They also exist on certain kinds of cells in multicellular animals. Some organisms' flagella rotate in a screw-like motion to propel the organism through the water or some other liquid. Flagella often occur in pairs. Some organisms, however, have a single flagellum. Cilia are much shorter and more numerous than flagella. They appear as short, hair-like extensions of the cell. Unlike the rotating motion of flagella, cilia beat backward and forward to propel the cell, as in this paramecium or to draw fluids over tissues. Let's pick up with the cilia moving substances over tissues. The cells of your respiratory tract contain cilia. This image is from the nasal cavity showing cilia beating in the same direction here to move bacteria, dirt, allergens out of the respiratory tract. As they beat towards your mouth you ultimately clear your throat, sneeze, or blow your nose to move the debris. In this video we see ciliated cells lining the uterine tube beating towards the uterus and drawing in this egg of a hamster into its fallopian tube. Flagella are the next structures. This is a flagellum on a sperm cell. So flagellum is singular, flagella would be plural and a flagellum is going to be longer than cilia. These structures will propel a cell by undulating in a whip-like motion. Many single cell organisms use flagella to propel themselves and we saw that in the first video. Although there are differences that we've seen between flagella and cilia, they actually have a common structure. The common structure is based upon the arrangement of microtubules in a very specific pattern. So let's use the following animation to dig deeper into the similar structures of cilia and flagella and how they are motorized to move. So as we've seen, flagella and cilia are structures that aid in locomotion and help move fluids across the surface of tissues in animal cells. Cilia are relatively short and work like oars, where flagella are relatively long and function like propellers in locomotion. Both cilia and flagella have a specialized arrangement of microtubules that's responsible for their locomotive ability. Here we'll cross-section the flagellum of a sperm and look at that arrangement. Microtubule doublets, dyeing arms, and the radial spoking proteins hold it all together. It projects from the cell and is covered by this plasma membrane. Cilia and flagella have the identical 9 plus 2 microtubule arrangement. Nine pairs of fused microtubules surrounding an unfused pair of microtubules in the center. So how does it move? Taking two of the sets of the microtubules out of the structure, we can see that they're anchored to a base with the dying arms in between. Using ATP as the energy source, the dying arms are described as walking along the tubules. So the dying arms of one microtubule grip the adjacent pair, pull and release, bind again as they walk along, and since the microtubule is anchored, 
they can't slide past each other and instead this is causing the microtubules to bend and that leads to the whip-like and undulating motion that we see in both flagella and in cilia. And there goes our sperm swimming away. Well, that's a wrap on cilia and flagella, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the screencast, and I'll see you soon.